going to tell you a bit about the curl and the curl today. Uh, I exaggerated just a little bit of the explanation for my talk in the program. But anyway, I think, um, or I hope to tell you a little about uh, what curl is and why, what it's good for and, and uh, what you could use it for in your everyday life starting tomorrow. Um, and uh, I'll do this by, by going through this, what curl is, a little bit of the history, what lib curl is. <laughs> and uh, I intend to touch a little about the, the development, who owns it, who uses it, a little bit what it does in protocols and what the licenses and stuff around this. Um, bindings and what kind, what kind of alternatives or competitors there, there are for lib curl. And uh, about the future, <coughs> what's uh, at the horizon. And uh, feel free to interrupt and ask questions, because um, I, I know this topic pretty good, so I think I could answer most questions. This is me, then. I know you don't really care who I am, but uh, I, I'm, I've been in the business for a while. I, I worked as a software developer uh, for quite some time. I, I'm, I'm employed by uh, Contactor and I have a company called Hex. I'm involved in uh, several open source projects. Nothing really uh, major. I tend to begin to smaller projects. But anyway, there are some 10 of them active right now. Um, that's me. Curve. Is a command line tool. Uh, curl you see in the logo type in the corner up there. That's the that's really the kind of name <coughs> I tend to use when I describe the project, not the, the tool, because the tool is called curl with all lowercase. Uh, so curl is a command line tool in the project curl, and the the curl uh, gets and sends data. Uh, with internet related protocols uh, specified as a URL, as I said, because you always specify a URL with curl. And uh, it supports these uh, 12 protocols at the moment. We tend to add a few protocols every now and then. Uh, it's a classic uh, kind of Unix style command line tool. It, you can throw a lot on it. It trusts, it's liberal on its input and conservative on its output, generally. So it trusts the input, you can throw, throw a lot of crap at it. Uh, it's, uh, it works as a pipe, as a filter, of course, and it works on fine names. It's standard it's STD in and STD out based. And it's basically a shell front end for libcurl. Libcurl is the library that provides basically all, everything curl does. So, Curl started back uh, almost 10 years ago. I actually started over 10 years ago because I, I started working. I needed a tool that could uh, transfer HTTP. And I couldn't find any. Remarkably, because WGET existed for over two years before I started this. But anyway, I, I wanted a small tool that could transfer HTTP for my own purposes because I wanted to I wanted to get the currency rates for, for a totally different project. But anyway, so I, I created HTTP GET in 1997 and then I, I wanted some currency rates from another protocol and then it all started from there and HTTP GET was a stupid name when it didn't only work with HTTP. And URL GET was a stupid name when it no longer only got data but also sent data. So I had to change name again. So I, I changed the curl in 98. <coughs> Already at version 4 then actually. So it was curve 4, 1998. And by then it did HTTP, Gopher, and FTP also upload. So it started a great while ago. And I did it just because I, I didn't find those tools already. So I thought, how hard can it be? I, I'll write my own. And I did. I, I actually based the first version on, on an existing code I found. Uh, and the first version did only 
the GDP get, and that was a very small amount of code. That, that, that original code was written by a Brazilian guy, and uh, that's not around in the code anymore. Curl is a command line tool, so, and it, since it, it transfers data from or to URLs, <coughs> and therefore we try to abstract away all the protocol details. It kind of work the same with curl, no matter what protocol you're using. You're basically describing, I want to download or I want to upload, and it downloads or uploads, no matter what protocol. So therefore, it's it basically the same. HTTP, FTP, FTPS, SFP, SFTP, whatever. Of course, you want a lot of other options as well. Anyway, so um, it has some uh, 120 command line options, so there's uh, a whole bunch of them. Uh, too many to remember, and uh, there are new ones all the time, almost. But you can enter them in a kind of config file instead of entering on the command line, and you can, well, it's not that hard. But curl is kind of a Swiss army knife of internet protocols. It's, it's rarely not just for downloading a single file, because that's, that's stupid. You could do that with anything. You could do that with your browser or wget or, or a bunch of other tools. Just getting a file off one of those protocols is, isn't... I mean, that's not the main focus. Uh, this is a tool for variations of that simplicity. You want to tweak stuff. You want to do it differently. Automate. You want to use pipes, files, whatever. So when I, okay, I started. I wrote curl. It started. People started to use it, and then I thought that what the heck? This is a lot of protocol transfer stuff. That is useful. It's useful for other applications as well. So we should write a library out of this. So curl could use the library, and other applications could also use the library. So I started working on this in 2000, and then we were already at version seven, and we're still at version seven actually. Uh, so. We created an API for applications, kind of unorthodox API, but still. I want it to be portable. I want it to write in C, because C is my primary language at all times. There's no plus plus here. <laughs> and the, the PHP binding, I mentioned it here because they were very early with their use of the lib curve, so they kind of helped me uh, add something to Aim at when I, when I did my efforts. <coughs> so, libcurl. That's a kind of uh, what curl is done, but only in a library form. So, it's, it's an API. So, you can get and send data using those previously mentioned 12 protocols, all more or less internet related. And it's written in C. C89, then, is my kind of layer. That's basically what we called NCC a while ago. Um, that's of course for maximum portability because there's no other language that's as suitable for portability, portability as C. And also I think uh, this is a library that's pretty much focused on low level you know, embedded devices as well as all sorts of different applications. There's no use for such a I mean, uh, that's why I don't focus on anything higher level than C because of that. And libcurl, it doesn't care about content. It's about transferring content. So it is, it, there's no type, no kinds of code that cares about content. There's no HTML parser. There's no HTML awareness at all. HTTP means data over HTTP or FTP or whatever. There's uh, two kinds of APIs, basically. One. One is synchronous and the other is asynchronous, so it's blocking and non-blocking. The, uh, the, the blocking one is very simple to use if you just want to get a file and, and it returns when it's done. And uh, even the um, API is designed to hide the protocol details, so you could basically write an application that then transfers data using these protocols without knowing these protocols at all. You can safely ignore those aspects. At least uh, if you want everything as normal, regular. And it's meant to be high performance. 
I think it is as well. I haven't done any real measurements lately, but there's nothing that stands in the way. Uh, it does. I think I actually I don't know any any other libraries that do well at the CT C10K problem. That's 10,000 simultaneous connections, and you you need some uh, tongue in cheek to do that right. And I think I, I, I do, or we do, probably. And uh, also, of course, uh, libcurrent uses third-party libs where applicable, and that means there's no, there's no reason to implement SSL or SSH or LDAP or other, <coughs> or, uh, and, and so even lower level, uh, level uh, layers that, uh, that uh, is done already is very good at other places. So we're using OpenSSL or GNU TLS or, or and similar projects for those things. So you use libcurl in applications or or um, whatever you do because of, of uh, several, <coughs> several, several other reasons. It's free and open and it's zero price because it's. I mean, it's not it's an open source and free software, and there's no one taking any money for this. Um, it's thread safe. It's IPv6. I, I don't think there's any other libraries as feature rich and uh, well documented as libcurl is, and it's highly portable. There are no competitors as portable. It's easy to use libcurl. This is a. a Okay, it's a very simple example, but this is how to get a single HTTP document. And this then uh, you do it the very same way, no matter what protocol, really. This is the, the blocking uh, API, then, uh, how to get a file. And in this particular case, it, it'll just write everything to STD out, so it's not that useful. You have to add some more magic to actually do something, something with the data. <coughs> of course, this is an open source project and I think it's a kind of a classic open source project in, in that way that we have no, there's no corporate sponsors, there's no major player, there's only us. We're spare time hackers, everyone. There's of course people who work and, and uh, provide patches that they produce during work hours or, or stuff like that. I don't know. But I, I'm not paid by anyone for doing this and I, there's no committer involved in the project that are, that are paid to do this. And uh, I mean, that's, those are facts. I think that's, therefore this is a typical small scale open source project. And I started this. Most contributors to this project uh, are drive-by patchers, I call them. And uh, the typical, they have a niche, they find a problem, they patch it, they fix something, and they contribute their patches. Fine, and then I never see them again. That's the usual case. And I mean, I mean there's nothing wrong in that, because that's uh, how, how this kind of ecosystem works. Still, that's the case. So, most contributors, they fix a single problem, and then they go away. The hardest part with that is that uh, there's very few people who kind of cares or looks for the big picture, so they, you get a lot of fixes for problems that you might not even agree is a problem, or that the fix is totally wrong, because it creates three other problems. But anyway, there's thus very few that actually sticks around. I think we're only really a handful of persons have been, who, who are around now that were around like four years ago as well. It's mainly me and a few others who <laughs> stand this. And uh, we have ten, roughly ten persons who have commit access. Even if I am the major uh, committer in the project, but that's because I usually tend to commit all the patches. <coughs> so and we have roughly 600 named contributors. And I, I, I do a, a huge effort in trying to keep people credited and attributed for each, uh, each contribution they provide. Not, not only because it's good to know who did it, but also because that's a kind of only 
Uh, that's the only compensation I can give. I can only give them the credit that they did it, they fixed this nasty bug, or they added its great feature. And I think it works pretty good. Uh, this is there's a steady development, and I think it's kind of a, it's a nice look to this. This is amount of code, uh, source lines of code in the project. Uh, I, we changed the uh, versioning system, so I don't have any old code and that, but it's kind of a steady, steady pace. And no, I don't know why it did. <laughs> <coughs> It's a bit strange that it can continues to grow at the same speed all the time. I really can't explain that because you'd think that you'd reach around the feature to fix a certain amount of bugs after a time that it would kind of flatten out. And I guess it, it will flatten out at some point. I don't know when. And I do in this project. I'm. Um, well, I created it, so I, and I'm still around, so I, I guess I take a lot of place in, in the project then, because I, 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 people have some kind of respect because I started it, so uh, I, I'm the main man there. So I, I read a lot of mail, I post a lot of mail, and I kind of comment a lot on what's happening, and I read a lot of patches. I, can't, I try to kind of uh, lead the way. I want it that way, not that. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's uh, uh, a lot of effort to <coughs> try to keep things out, keep it minimal and uh, I mean to the point, not to add stuff that's not really related. Because it's very easy to start adding features. Okay, I add features all the time, but I mean unrelated features or think, things that I think is unrelated. Licenses are always good fun when talking open source or free software. And uh, I tend to use the word open source, so uh, take that as you want. Uh, if this project started as GPL, as many others, I just picked GPL as kind of a fluke out of the air. And uh, it didn't really suit me. So it, I changed to MPL, the Mozilla public license. That wasn't long after they released Mozilla the first time. Because I kind of like the spirit of MPL, but then uh, MPL is uh, uh, not really a suitable license for anything because of its uh, GPL problems and it's not really that free anyway. So it kind of to, it gave us more problems than it solved. So we, I had to go away from MPL and then we did a, a weird dual license for a while just to get away it, and then we switched to the MIT license, which is a. Uh, pretty similar to the modified BSD, which is, uh, I don't think there is a more liberal license. You can basically do whatever you want with the code, but not claim that you wrote it. I think that's been a benefit for the project. I know, I know this uh, <laughs> as a free software place where lots of people uh, speak for the GPL in all cases. I'm a, a believer in it. Uh, that even less GPL is good at times. Not for everything, but for cases like this. So, who owns the curl then? Uh, I own the copyright, because uh, I've, I've done almost everything. I mean, all the major parts. And then, of course, people contribute. They contribute the patches, but they don't change the copyright because of that, because they only modify what I have made already. And uh, uh, actually those parts that have been different, they have all assigned their copyright to me, where there have been any major contributions by other people. That of course gives me the right to do basically <laughs> what I write with all the code, but, um, but I tried to... How do you say to the one that contributes that uh, I still own the copyright? How do you... Say or write it. Uh, I normally don't. Uh, so 
so, okay, there's a, I, I write it in the contribute document that, that explains how you contribute to the project. And there it says how the copyright uh, uh, business works. So, but, but when they contribute, they agree to, to the terms? Uh, not explicitly, no. But that, this is not different from any other project. So, no, I don't do it explicitly. I could ask them, are you really sure that you want to hand over your project or your contribution to me? And, but uh, no, I don't. Actually, this is a kind of a, a dilemma. I think it's a, it's, it's a hassle in all open source projects, what to do with contributions. And how do I know that people, uh, well, person A, actually owns the right to contribute this code? And you could take the stance of the, of the GNU project or FSF and, and have every, everyone write a lot of papers and ask their employee, employers to send in a lot of papers as well. But I've chosen not to because it's just too much work. Instead, I, I, I say this, that I, I accept these contributions and I assume that you have the right to contribute to my project when you do that. And I also try to properly then uh, attribute what people uh, provide so that I can at, at a later time or at any time say that oh this piece of code is, was donated by whoever did it. This is, uh, I mean this is not unique for, for, for the curl project, this is uh, kind of a problem for all open source projects and there is, this is an issue, the, these are issues that are kind of often just um, avoided or better not spoken about in, in most projects actually, at least if they're kind of smaller. You have a, you write a line there in, a, you wrote in the D. That's me. You D. Oh, I am D. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Danny, I was going to say Danny, but that's me. <laughs> And yeah, you could you could then argue also what happens the day I stop this and I don't want to do this anymore. And, and what happens with the copyright then? But it's it's really not an issue as long as I uh, distribute this code and everything under a license that everyone can do whatever they want with. So everyone is free to fork it tomorrow and do whatever they want as long as they follow the license. And the, the license is free software and open source, so it really doesn't matter that I own the copyright. I mean in most practical manners, uh, matters anyway. It basically means that I have the right to re-license it and give it away to someone else with an unlicensed. Have you written a will? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, well, if I get uh, run over by a bus tomorrow, what happens then? then it'll be public domain in 70 years. <laughs> 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 So back uh, to what uh, almost all distributions uh, have or uh, offer curl, mostly libcurl, uh, pretty much too. Not only Linux then, but uh, pretty much all major operating systems up to date. And, and then most of these, at least these uh, commercial uh, Unix vendors, they kind of tend to provide it on some bonus CDs or stuff. But uh, they all share this, they don't tell us, so you have to figure this out somehow, if someone found it on the CD somewhere. And this is kind of, this goes for everyone. Uh, and um, having your, your package in, in these uh, contexts is usually not, uh, it, it doesn't provide anything particular. I mean, we don't get any help from these guys. None, none of them really, because they, they don't contribute back, because everything works good enough for them, so they just package it and ship it. And uh, they, uh, in, instead they tend to absorb the bug reports for good and bad. So, uh, but, and that is understandable, because if you install, uh, kind of, if you install AIX, you report bugs to IBM, not to us, even if curl bugs. So they'll sit on the bug report that says, it goes booms when I do it's 
But that's good too, because the bugs may not be related to current, it could be a problem in their operating system. And the, the, the more annoying part is that the, their packages tend to be lagging behind terribly. So you get a lot of bug reports from people who use a version we released like five years ago. It's, it's in an open source project, it's a really heavy burden to try to solve bugs or chase bugs that we may have solved two, three, four years ago, or may not. But the code base is totally different today, so it's, it's annoying. So I tend to just ignore those bug reports. <laughs> Yeah. As a developer, uh, is it someone of the distribution that you, you think is is uh, easier for you to to work with? I mean, if there's a, a distribution that's easier for me to work with, no, no, to to uh, to give uh, back more. That uh, gives back more to to the to, project. Yeah, to to you, as yeah, so upstream. Yeah, yeah, but it tends to differ in time over time. I think. Okay. I think it's more uh, up to the in particular individual at those companies that tend to take care of the package because I'm pretty close to the Debian package guy and uh, not too long ago the SUSE guy turned up and he has been around a lot now and uh, the Red Hat guys have been around too but it varies over time and I think it depends on actually who at that company gets the curl badge in their forehead. <coughs> But uh, generally, all the Linux uh, distributions are pretty good at this, and the others are pretty bad. And that involves the other free operating systems too, like NetBSD and a lot of the others. They've never been, they've never contacted me at all, or the project. So, who uses curl then? Um, pretty much everyone and all the big ones, at least. And the, of course, they like the license because they don't have to give back a thing if they don't want to. They don't tend to do it either, but uh, they, they have the option to just take everything and do whatever they want. And uh, they like the portability. I, I, a lot of these companies do, uh, they use libcurl on Windows, Mac and Linux, so they can do the same code for, for all the platforms that transfers. And I thought it was funny that the troll tech guy mentioned Google Earth, because Google Earth is of course using libcurl, or we're using it at least. Uh, they, I think they like the stability too, because Lyft has been around for a while now, it's quite stable, it works, it, it downloads and uploads stuff re fairly reliably at least. So in the, in the open source free software world there are of course a lot of users as well, because it's a, it's a G GPL compatible license. It's basically installed everywhere and already, or, or easy to install at least if, if it's not there by default. I think it's pretty well documented, and uh, there's a lot of uh, open source project using it. In this case, Firefox 3 uses it for its crash reporting tool, not for actually downloading stuff in <laughs> Firefox 3. So it's not that important. <laughs> So, I can try to estimate at times how many users there are of curl, but of course I can't know because it's totally impossible to know. I know that it's been downloaded at, at roughly the rate of 1 million times per year, but what, what does that say? I mean, that's just for, from a, a few servers that we run, but most people don't download it from our servers anyway. So, there's no, no way to know how many users there are, and um, it's really not that important because we don't get anything extra if more users use it. <laughs> it's uh, quite portable. Uh, it's, it runs on uh, just about every modern 32-bit operating system uh, I know of. There are a few re real-time operating systems that has no POSIX layer that can run it, but anyway. And in most CPUs that you can find today, or even a few that you can find today, uh, I don't know, I don't think there's any uh, competitor uh, it's even close. We try to maintain the portability by doing a lot of tests and a lot of automated tests on, on a few, uh, as many as possible, of course, uh, exotic hardware platforms. But of course, that depends on uh, voluntary efforts too, so we tend to not cover all the platforms, but having a, a fairly wide extent 
tend to keep it fairly good anyway. We still, of course, rely on users to report. Yeah. Do you do lots of this testing yourself? Like, do you have a lot of exotic machines, or do you have lots of users with really strange? No, we have a kind of we have a distributed uh, automatic build system. So people <coughs> that, uh, who have whatever system they want, they, they can run this automatically and then run all the tests every night and then mail in their reports. So we have a kind of a page that displays the status. So I, I have a. I have access to a, a, a fairly large amount of, of platforms myself, but it's quite hard to do everything yourself. <clears throat> so, test them. How to maintain stability and how to keep things uh, from not breaking apart. And, and test is generally is something that's uh, weak in an open source project. And I can't say we're very good at tests either. So. Of course, we have no requirements to test against, and that's uh, what everyone who works with test and verification will <laughs> like or not. Uh, but we, we try to maintain stability and, and functionality by doing these auto builds I mentioned. They're built several times a day, every day, always on uh, like 10 or 12 different architectures. And uh, we offer daily snapshots so people can actually download whatever exists today and try if we if we try to fix a bug and you and someone want to try it out and verify it. Uh, but no there's no formal testing and there's there are hardly any unit tests but again I don't think this is very unusual <coughs> it's all, all, all a matter of uh, time and effort and <coughs> Oh, uh, it supports a lot of protocols, blah, blah, blah. A lot of different SSL libraries, of course. Uh, five different ones, in fact. And uh, we, we try to support, as I said before, we try to use low-level uh, libraries that already exist to provide the functions we need, instead of doing it ourselves again. So, we, of course, we have uh, tried to uh, have a community of curl and good curl hackers. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of mail. There's, we have a bug trackers. We try to collect new ideas. We um, discuss designs and stuff. And I, uh, as I said, this is a typical uh, open source, small open source project, I should say, because we don't have any major players here. There's just us. We're all the same. We're all like you and me. We're, there's no difference here. Everyone can join, and there's no there's this meritocracy here, like everywhere else. Prove yourself, and you get everything. So, who pays for this? I couldn't help adding my family there, because of course this mostly takes time. So, uh, they tend to uh, live with my absence from time to time. Uh, but this, there's uh, fully volunteer work. There have been companies paying for its, uh, features every now and then. Uh, one major player there is the Swedish IIS fund that funded uh, features. In 2005, I got a, a what's it called a, a bunch of money <laughs> to do stuff. Or well, actually, I pretty carefully specified what. So you you probably can't live off curl directly, but indirectly you probably can because people see the. I uh, yes, I can. I, at least I can earn money on curl indirectly. I don't live on curl, but I can I can gain money from. Uh, uh, related projects. People want to install. They want to build. Pro I mean, applications based on libcurl, they want to have it, want to debug big libcurl, they want to debug their applications using libcurl, or, the, or similar stuff. So yeah, that happens uh, pretty frequently actually. At least I get the questions pretty frequently. Do you do this full time, or do you work with other stuff? I wasn't here first. Yeah, I don't do this full time. This is my, uh, this is my spare time occupation. Um, I'm a consultant programmer full time, but I don't do this at work hours. This is my late hours work. So uh, you can use uh, libcurl directly then from pretty many different uh, environments, but they're all uh, maintained, written outside the curl project. There are a lot of, uh, oh, perhaps not a lot, but several different alternatives if you want to use something else in libcurl for transferring files to the, some or all of these protocols. But there's, <coughs> of course, 
different aspects on all competitors. But you could say that all higher level languages like Python, Perl, and Tickle, and whatever, they all have their own, own language specific ones. So there's rarely, really no reason to use libcurl for those languages. But we have bindings for them as well. So I, <laughs> here's the question. I, don't have much time to go through, but I get it a lot. What's the difference between curl and wget? And, uh, and uh, to me, there is a lot of differences. I mean, not if you want to download a single file, because if you want to down download a single file, they're pretty much the same. But libcurl is a library that curl uses. wget doesn't have that, and wget is the only command line. It has a recursive fetch that curl doesn't, and curl does have a, a lot of more protocols. It's more pro portable and uploads to a lot of protocols that wget doesn't. And wget is uh, 1.0 HTTP. It's quite amazing, but it works remarkably well, I think. Uh, and it's, of course, a GNU project and GPL licensed, which uh, is a could be a significant difference to people. So there's just a few numbers. There's uh, one over 100 releases of curl done so far. So and uh, keep a pace of like uh, almost 10 releases a year than at an average. I think we're slower now, so we're probably down to six releases per year or so, five. Um, a lot of releases, a lot of contributors. Uh, we have 24% comments in the code. So, I, I hope that um, uh, what, what I have here is a curl is project. I, I, I will explain a little bit what it does. This, for, for the future, I, I really never um, look very uh, long forward ahead because it's so hard to predict. I have no major plans for this because, you know, it's my spare time. I, I don't know how much spare time I will have for the next six months to spend on this, but there's no major. I just hope it's, it'll gradually improve. Like it has done in the past, and hopefully just then just continue. It depends pretty much what people involved does and uh, want to do. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. That's what lib curl and curl is, and uh, how we work, and uh, who owns it, and whatever. I hope you have a better insight into that now. So you can just join the project now and make uh, nice patches that I can review. Thank you.